Hello everybody, welcome back to my porch. I forgot to introduce myself the last few times that I've done this. So for those of you that have never seen my videos before or on my channel, my name is Rebecca Zardi and I live in Western Kentucky. And this morning I'm gonna to bring to you another great devotional. It comes from this book, Morning Glories. And our scripture reading this morning is Ecclesiastes 3, one through eight. One that I'm sure most of us are quite familiar with. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 says thus, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. And our devotional this morning says this, there's a great satisfaction in seeing the slate wiped clean of things to do. In addition, there can sometimes be a special reward. Let me share this instance with you. I had received a letter from a minister friend who explained that due to heart problems, he was leaving the active pastorate and planned to serve the Lord through writing. He was asking me for some pointers. Like many others, I tend to let my personal mail pile up until I have time. I don't know why I answered this particular letter so promptly, but I did, offering some encouragement and practical suggestions. Barely one week had elapsed when I received a letter from this minister's wife. It says, thank you so much for your good letter to David, she wrote. And she added, the Lord took him home last night. Even as my heart went out to this new widow, I realized that God was speaking to me. How glad I was that I had taken time to reply at once rather than putting it off, even though the Lord knew this old friend would have no further need of human help. If this experience would say anything, it is this, do it now. Just three little words, but what a wealth. Of advice. So often we leave undone things that could so easily be taken care of if we would but do it now. What if one of those things is seeking forgiveness from someone we have offended or wronged? We put it off, possibly waiting for the other person to make the first move, or maybe we're waiting for the right time. There is no remorse so keen as that of knowing we have neglected something to do and now it's too late. The opportunity is gone forever. What if the Holy Spirit is gently nudging us to go and share the gospel with a shut-in or an unchurched neighbor? Is it now the time to do it? Not often does God dramatically remind us of the uncertainty of life that today is ours and tomorrow may be too late. But common sense and practicality echo that this is so. No time like the present, we quip to each other, a cliche, I know. Nevertheless, it is a worthwhile precept, and putting precept into practice can often be accomplished just by heeding three little words. How often it is not the actual tasks themselves that tire us out. It's the never get done frustrating image they conjure up in our minds. I have to do this and this and this. And a mountain of jobs blurs our vision of the two or three that we could be doing while we're sighing over those that are waiting to be done. It's somehow easier for us to lament. There's so much to do than to get busy and attack things one at a time. A proven way to help us implement our resolve to do it now is to make this a matter of daily prayer. Tell the Lord your problem. Ask him to strengthen your determination. God will enable anyone who really wants to. 
do it now. During this time when God has literally set us down, taken away all of our distractions, all of our extracurricular activities, perhaps God's speaking to you today. Do it now. Don't put it off any further. Don't keep making excuses. Don't try wiggling your way out of things that you know you should have already accomplished. Is there someone you need to ask forgiveness from? Is there something you should apologize for? Perhaps you do have that neighbor that's unchurched or somebody you've been meaning to introduce the gospel to but just haven't got around to it. How about you do it now? How about you take that time out, ask God to strengthen, to embolden you, to give you the courage and say, hey, can I introduce you to the guy that saved my life? He wants to save yours too. I hope you have a blessed day. And remember, I love you. But more importantly, God loves you. Enjoy the day. Bye-bye.